<laughs> it was like playing in the back three, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> middle of a three. I like being middle of a three. I did, yeah, totally. <laughs> I noticed you kept it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got to know your strengths, haven't you? Yeah. Nord of Robbins is a concept I've heard about. I've heard mm -hmm. the name and without ever really going into depth of, of what they do. So to be able to be here at Martin House where I've seen so many aspects of the house and what they're able to achieve, but this is going to be a huge difference for them that I can, I can see having joined in a session already. Um, the, the impact on young people and how it will open up the opportunity to speak to them or just for them to lose themselves in uh, it, for the period they're, they're here and the enjoyment and the fulfilment that music can bring. I saw you kept it fairly simple in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the extent of your musical talent? I've found my whole career has been better if I've kept things simple. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I didn't really... You look comfortable in a three there as well. <laughs> yeah, middle of a three, well protected. That's, that's at my best. No, I mean, beyond the desk camp recorder, I didn't get much further. I, I always wanted to play the drums or... I had this vision of, wouldn't it be great on the bus, you know, you could play a guitar and everyone join in. And I love those sorts of nights, but I've never applied myself to, to going and learning an instrument. It's definitely been the case for decades that football and music are intertwined. Huge. Uh, every dressing room, you know, I know teams aren't on the coaches, uh, uh, certainly in the Premier League, they don't spend as long travelling on the bus, but it's a great way of finding out more about your teammates and about your team and connecting people and every every team will have had moments in their journey where certain songs have resonated certain songs have been popular when they've been on a winning run or and it brings groups of players together and you you meet people and you meet lads you played with where you know a song might play and maybe it was something that you know in the years you played together that was a big moment that brought everybody together and it's it's that emotive part of music bringing memories, you know, happy memories to your mind or maybe things that weren't so good and that's the power of music, I think, or part of the power of music. Gareth, what are your thoughts on being the 2022 recipient of the Legends of Football Award? Well, I was reluctant and embarrassed at the start. <laughs> um, Why? Um, because I think when you're in the job I'm in, you're hoping for start, we're going to be there a bit longer. <laughs> and uh, of course, I look at people who've won the award in the past and some of the things they've won and the trophies they've won. And uh, I know all of us in football always want to have won more and feel you should have done more. But yeah, I mean, it's illustrious company to be within. So uh, I'm very proud and honoured to have been recognised. But uh, I'm also conscious there's a lot more I want to still achieve in my career. Well, let me answer both the questions you'll probably ask yourself. A, why me? And B, is this an end of career award? <laughs> no, it certainly isn't. Plenty of recipients have still been playing, still managing, still are active in the game. So don't worry, this isn't a pre-retirement <laughs> thing. And also as well, it's recognition of what you have achieved with the England team so far as England manager. Under you, England have been to a semi-final and a final, and you look at the history, they've only ever been a final once and made the semis before. And you've achieved both those things in your tenure. Now, I know, of course, as a football person, you're going to say, well, unless we won something, it doesn't count. There's no, no point in second. It's not the case. And particularly as well for the way you've unified not just the England football team, but also how you've brought the public together and given them fantastic moments. And for the first time in a long time, England go to a tournament with you at the helm with real hope. And that's what we want to recognise. No, well, I, look, I, I massively appreciate what you've said. And um, without a doubt, I remember growing up as a kid and those big England moments, I often say to the players, are the moments that bring the whole family together and bring a huge part of the country together. And that's part of the privilege of the job, to be able to, to be involved in those big nights. So... The, the journey the team are on, we feel we're, we've given some credibility back and we've given some hope and now that can we go that one step further and bring what we're all hoping can happen back to the country. Also as well, the fact that the players themselves now find playing for England 
under your tenure a lot more comfortable? They find the shirt perhaps doesn't weigh so heavily on their shoulders? Well, I think winning matches helps that. And, um, you know, I'm very conscious. I really enjoyed my time playing for England and all of the managers I played with. And, you know, I inherited a team that the start of the togetherness and the, uh, the young players coming through, Roy gave a lot of those guys their debuts. And when we took over, nobody complained within the camp about the atmosphere in the camp. But I think we've been able to build on that. And of course, I think what had started to happen was that we'd lost a bit of belief in what might be possible. And players were f almost as worried about being the one to be at fault for a key goal or a key moment that might cost the team the result. And you know, we've tried to affect that mindset a bit and say, look, you can't do anything about the last 30, 40 years. That's not your fault. But what you've got is an opportunity to make a difference and be the first to break through a load of barriers. And let's see what we might go and achieve. And I think having that challenge rather than the fear of what might go wrong is, is the approach we've tried to take. How much has music and that kind of group contribution been part of your England squads as manager and mm. be honest how much did you recognize the music that the lads are playing because <laughs> things do change as you get a little more mature yeah yeah well I mean I've I, my music goes from my parents music which was sort of the Carpenters and Sinatra and people like that you know we, we were born in Watford so what Elton did with Watford was a big part of, of uh, growing up are you an Elton John fan? I'm a big Elton John fan, yeah, absolutely. As I say, w w my family were in Watford, so his connection with the club, but of course his music, again, is across generations of, mm. uh, of, of fans. And, and then you, you, you move through when I was playing and you know, the, the style of music changes to now I'm managing, but my kids are you know, teenage, uh, early 20s, and same age as the players. So you, you're actually blessed because you're across all of these different generations of music and you can tap into any of them and obviously I'm slightly more comfortable moving to some than others <laughs> um, and you've got to find that moment of not embarrassing yourself hugely but it's a great way of staying young and staying current if you know what as a coach the music interests or the film interests of the of the players you have something that you can connect with as I say whilst recognizing there's a line that you shouldn't cross as a manager. Can you sing? Uh, no. Well, I can, poorly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've loved nights where a team have been together and, you know, if somebody has had a guitar or somebody has, you know, led singing that everybody joins in again. It, have, you done, have you done that with England camps? Did you not have Ed Sheeran come in? We did, yeah, we did. And Ed. what did that do for the mood and in the squad, etc.? Well, we were blessed. We've got a world star coming in to perform for us at distance from me yeah. to you, a, a humble guy. And of course, he's, he's got the ability to sing different tracks that connect the whole team and mm. appeal to the whole team. So it wasn't just one type of music that you're thinking, oh, half the lads might not yeah. like this and two or three might be into it. You know, he had everybody in the palm of his hand. And, and that's very much the ethos of your managership style, isn't it? Well, I, I Inclusivity. just... Inclusivity. Yeah, I think we, we're a diverse team, we're a diverse nation. Um, music is one of the greatest examples of that. I think young people think about it even less. You know, it's just what, what they're growing up with. For some of our older generations, that's been a, a different sort of journey. But it's important people realise that when the team plays, you're connecting every community and every city and the north with the south and different religions mm. and that is the power when the England team play. Grace, what do you get from the music therapy? What? Just nice to do stuff on your own and get some peace out of doing stuff like your siblings or mm. your brother and sister doing something and you can't do stuff with all of disabilities. Some music is the one thing you can do. Do you feel like when you come here it gives you a, a real release from from whatever you're battling at the moment, you can forget all about that and just relax and enjoy the music. Yeah. Does it affect your mood at all, do you think? It makes me a bit happier to do music than just sat around doing nothing or getting stressed. And how does Mike help? 
He's nice. He's a cool guy. Oh, thank you. He got me into drumming. And do you normally have the England manager as your backup drummer? <laughs> 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 so back to your singing. What's your go-to number if you're asked to do karaoke? Uh, I don't get asked to do karaoke, although I have I'm to say... Told, I, my sources tell me <laughs> there was an incident in Portugal a few years ago, you may be able to guess my sources, <laughs> where um, you decided to do La Bamba. OK, right. Well, I do know your sources now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you going to say another song then? Well, I, well I, only that I was in a restaurant a few a couple of months ago and uh, you know sometimes people come up and ask for pictures and there's always that difficult bit of right if I do this one then you know do we yeah. get half a dozen people come over so anyway I because you a, don't like being the centre of attention well, do you? I it's don't, not your thing. I don't and of course when you're out with friends it's you know it's their night as well yeah. but a guy came over with his kids had a picture and we kind of then had this discussion about oh you know hope hope we'd be able to sit quietly. Anyway, I could see this lady coming across and I thought, oh, this could be difficult. How do I, you know, kindly um, have the picture and quickly move on? And she said, oh, um, hope you don't mind, but, um, you know, there's a wedding party downstairs. And I thought, OK, well, picture with the couple. And she said, and we were wondering if you could come and sing Sweet Caroline for us <laughs> on the thing. <laughs> and I said... No. Uh, uh, Look, can I just say that won't be happening <laughs> tonight? <laughs> so she wasn't very happy with me, but I think the rest of the group got got away with a near miss, frankly. So, <laughs> and your rendition of La Bamba? Um, How good? Well, at least I knew the words, whereas the person you had the information <laughs> from, who, who was supposed to be there helping me, <laughs> just sang La Bamba <laughs> about fifteen times repetitively, and so <laughs> yeah, I do remember that night. Yeah. OK, if you can't sing, can you dance? Um, well, I have been seen on dance floors over the years, yeah. <laughs> OK, so you're not afraid to uh, strut your stuff? No, I don't, look, I, I love music. Of course, when you're in a role like I am, you know that there's always probably somebody with a camera or whatever. Yeah. So, so you've got to be in company where you're really relaxed and at ease to, to really let your hair down, but... Yeah, family do's, or uh, if I'm with really good friends, then yeah, singing and dancing, music is a big part of our life. First record you ever bought? Uh, first single, because obviously I'm going back to the days of vinyl, uh, would have been Phil Collins, Can't Harry Love. Mm -hmm. And first album was Tears for Fears, songs from the big chair. Okay. If somebody was to play you in a musical, which musician should it be? Oh, wow, great question. Poof. People don't say that to me very often. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you seeing yeah. yourself as? Well, I mean, I'm not, not particularly cool, not, you know, not particularly rhythmic, uh, so, oh, I don't know, I, I'm, I've, never, I've never thought about that, Jeff, it's a brilliant question, but you don't want to ruin someone's career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I've said now I'm not, I'm not called or rhythmic, and if I put someone in that slot, exactly. I'm killing them, aren't I, really? <laughs> Best concert you've ever been to? Um, I saw U2 at Wembley, which was fantastic. They're one of my favourite bands. I saw Bon Jovi, which was the last concert at the old Wembley. So I was fortunate. The old Wembley, I played in the last cup final, the last England international, we lost both of those, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I saw the last concert, which at least was, you know, we went away with a smile on our face. But I actually got to see Adele recently, uh, about 40 yards away, uh, that special evening. And um, yeah, that was a unique experience, really. Favourite male artist and favourite female artist? I think now Adele. Um, I mean, I'm old enough that my parents played Barbra Streisand in the house, who was an incredible mm -hmm. performer. Male artist, well, now I would, I would, I'm a big Ed Sheeran fan, and because I've met him, I've got even more respect for him as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's amazing. We've got an incredible country, haven't we, for talent? Um, Extraordinary you know, what it's produced worldwide for the size yeah. of country with the islands. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, you know, the, from the Beatles through to to the two I've spoken about now, you know, world stars born on our shores and, and 
yeah, all people who actually are really humble and connect with the public. What music do you play yourself if you're in the car, or I know you're a keen runner, if you yeah. go for a run, what do you tend to put on? It, it really varies because I've got so many different interests, so anything from you know, what's, what's really current to songs that take me back to a moment in the past, to something classical that might inspire me at a certain time. So I, I genuinely have a really eclectic mix of, of music um, tastes. And as I say, you're always discovering something new because uh, I'll be watching a film and there'll be a soundtrack or there'll be an artist that I've, I'm not aware of or the kids will play something and I'll say, oh, who's this? And they'll kind of... Really, Dad? You know, come on. <laughs> so, uh, but I love it. I love that discovering new new things. When you joined the three clubs that you played for, did you have to sing an initiation song? Actually, no. It wasn't. Have you got away with that? Well, it wasn't, wasn't a thing. It, I don't remember it being a thing. Um, I mean, definitely, we had plenty of nights out where we were <laughs> where we finished singing. But we uh, we didn't have that um, yeah that sort of stand on the chair and and sing so yeah I don't, I'm trying to think when that came in it can't be yeah last uh, ten maybe fifteen yeah, years yeah so I probably had just fallen into that management uh, time best singer in the England squad or who who thinks they're the best singer in the England squad well I haven't heard loads of them but I remember Tammy with the under 21s was mm -hmm. a very good singer I've I've seen him uh, sing and yeah and I've not seen anybody better that's for sure <laughs> as he set the bar high yeah yeah he's very good very good do you see as well the correlation between music and not just its power as a therapy but how it can lift people's moods mm -hmm. as well and in all seriousness, when you're in the dressing room, you want the squad to be happy with their music. But is it an important part of preparation for a game, what's yeah. being played? Yeah, there were some coaches who didn't want music in the dressing room, and I never really understood that, because I think when you're preparing for a performance, it might calm you, it might inspire you, everybody will use it in a slightly different way. And we're going into a real high-pressure situation, and. Now a lot of players would wear headphones again, which some coaches aren't keen mm. on because you want perhaps more interaction in the mm. dressing room. But I know that to go into that personal space before a big performance is a really key moment. And I think you've got to recognise that. So whatever you're using music personally for, you're, you're normally taking yourself to a better place that reminds you perhaps of good performances or good moments in your life that are getting you mentally prepared for the game and that is a connection and I know we laughed about Sweet Caroline earlier but I was in the dressing room when the team were out on the pitch warming up and we were only 40,000 in Wembley for the Germany game but that was the first time I started to hear that in the stadium and it just it was powerful it, it, I could tell that people were excited for the game and with the team and and you don't often hear the crowd from within the dressing room and and when they were playing that and singing along you could hear it and it was almost like you could feel this is going to be a good day I mean are there already songs that you associate both with Russia and the Euros yeah and and some are from compilations I saw at the end of the tournament and some are from journeys we went along at the time and so there are so many little moments that you, uh, that you remember and, and music brings those memories back. How much are you looking forward to this year? Because it's an unusual year with the World Cup yeah. in the winter time. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a, firstly a brilliant challenge for us because we're now at a point where the team have got to a certain level. Um, there's more expectation, but there's also more evidence for the team that we can do well. And now we're really focusing on what are the what are the small details that can take us from a team that's really competitive to a team that can win in the biggest games. And we know we've still got a step to take to beat to beat the best other, the re the best of the rest consistently. And of course, you're balancing that with we're still ten months away and the end of one season and the beginning of the next. So form and fitness is going to fluctuate a lot over that ten month period. If we had to play tomorrow, we've got half a squad missing potentially so it, it's about remembering actually 
There are things we want to get right for March and for the summer, which are important building blocks for us. But also we, we've got to pace ourselves, almost pace the team across the year to peak at the end of the season. From your experience of those previous two tournaments though, how confident are you that you're in the right place and you can take that final step? Yeah, I think the team are improving, gaining more experience, not only um, as a collective, but individually with clubs of playing in big matches. And, you know, form in the league is important. Form and performances in the big matches in the league, even more important. And then in those you know, cup semi-finals, finals with their clubs, you learn more about the players in those moments that correlates to the big England nights because it's, it's about performing under the most extreme pressure and intensity and you do learn more about the players in those moments. So they're the things we're assessing more and more. Can people stand up in an England shirt? Have they got the psychological resilience to, to really thrive and perform on those big nights? So if you took your two passions, football and music, would the, in some ways, ultimate conclusion be for you to be sat somewhere, someday, with your team, in a dressing room, singing along to We Are The Champions? <laughs> well, whenever I hear that, and teams are, not, are often parading a trophy now when they do that, I get emotional watching teams celebrate because uh, I think that tune and that those lyrics do evoke um, that sort of emotion and uh, yeah there's nothing better than than those moments it, it's it's strange even winning I think the really powerful moments are within the first hour or so within the team it's it's on the pitch it's the bit you share with the fans it's the the music you hear it's the bit back in the dressing room and however much you drink later in the night you never can quite recreate that that moment so yeah, that, that would be incredibly special. Well, I'm sure I speak on behalf of the whole country when we say we really hope you're singing it this December. We'd love nothing more than to bring everybody together to do that. Go on then, you lead, Grace. They'll, they'll follow you.